Hello everybody and welcome back to Season 39 of the Pokemon Cup Series. Today we're here at Bristol Motor Speedway for the running of the Food City 500. On the pole will be the 43 of Alexander Rowe and alongside him will be the 51 of Chris Leone. In row 2 we will have the 24 of Katie Lynn Bexford and the 48 of Grayson Acevedo. In row 3 is a 38 Maxwell Smart and the 66 of Christian Vargas. In row 4 is the 88 Eli Bright and the 77 of Isaiah Bernesh. In row 5 is Clark McKee in the 96 and Johnny Garner in the 95. Row 6 we will have JD Figueroa in the 6 car and the 20 of Dylan Kroom. Row 7 has Igor Barreto in the number 2 and Alex Hawkins in the number 15. Row 8 will have Cassandra Kirker in the 8 car and Anthony Then in the 37. In row 9 is Christian Russell in the 17 and Max Bailey in the 42. These two drivers locked themselves into round 2 by winning the last two first round races. Russell won the first first round race and the second one, the last one we did, was won by Max Bailey. So these two are in the playoffs or in the next round no matter what. And the last row of playoff drivers consists of Priya McShane and Shane Goladex. And now, we're about to get ready to go racing here at Bristol as we wrap up the first round of the playoffs and we'll see four drivers eliminated from playoff contention. And right now, Johnny Gardner, Dylan Kroom, Christian Vargas, and Shane Goladex are in the bottom four. So they will need good results here today and bad results from the ones ahead of them um, for them to advance over to the next round and we know that four drivers will be eliminated from the playoffs after this race so without further ado let's go trackside for the command here at Bristol and here we go 50 laps around Bristol Motor Speedway, sure to be a fun race, and we will decide from here which four drivers will see their championship hopes come to an end here today. And here we go, the Food City 500 is green at Bristol Motor Speedway. And Alexander Rowe, a great start for him. He's going to lead lap number one. Oh, three wide back here. Oh, man. This is going to be a good one. 48 trying to avoid the wall. He hits the wall. Smacks the wall a little bit. And they're going to be side by side into the corner. Ooh, Maxwell Smart trying to fight back up high. See if he gets the run on the high line right here in the corner. Trying to get by Eli Bright in the 88. Might try to clear him on the corner. Right here. Or will the A38 outbreak him? Oh no, Eli Bright was able to get by as the caution comes out. And Alexander Rowe will lead us back to the green flag. I mean to the yellow flag, I'm sorry. Yellow, yellow. So the caution came out and it was with the four car. Zachary Fitzwater gets tangled up in front of the other cars. Oh, look at this. They were about to go four wide, and Priya McShane was in the wall. Wow, and she just barely avoids the contact and all the wrecking in front of her and is able to continue the race. Huge pile up here that brings out our, next, our first caution of the race. And Shane Goladex, oh wow, now he and Johnny Garner are making contact for no apparent reason. And these two are on the bubble in the playoff pitcher. Wow, what are these guys doing? Oh my gosh, they're all bunched up for no apparent reason, I don't know why. Guess they're slowing down for the other cars, the uh, pack to, you know, reunite or whatever. I don't know. 
And they're still getting bunched up together. Chase Wiston and Austin Stitzel having a little trouble trying to find where, they, where, where they're supposed to go. And now they're starting to get back into the swing. Now they're starting to get back up to speed. And hopefully this thing will be sorted out real quickly. Otherwise it's going to be a huge mess to, um, you know, fix at the end of this one. At least the lead pack is going to be um, back to motion, but now everybody's back into, um, back in line. Thought for a second it was going to be mixed up or something. But we're going to get back to the green in a good orderly line. And the only driver out of the race right now is Lean Campana. In the in the 32 car, he's the only one out of it right now, of this race. So we're gonna get back to the green here at Bristol as all the other drivers get back into the line, and we're about to take the green flag once again as Alexander Rowe takes the lead, leads the field back to the green flag, and we're about to get back into racing. And here we go. Forty-one car on the pit row. That's John Gilbert. Probably trying to get everybody to get a head start of everybody in case the pit stops happen here at Bristol. And now the seventy-seven and the sixty-six battle for position. Sixty-six trying to fight back up high. Seventy-seven might try to outbreak him here. This corner. Oh, ooh, 38 is in the wall, and the 2 car gets into the apron, and now gets into Acevedo, and the 48 is going flipping. He makes contact with Shane Goladex, and that'll bring out the caution. 48 car stuck on the road, keeping the other kit cars stranded. And now they're making contact as Samad Oscon goes around, trying to avoid the wreckage and now Alexander Rowe gets it with all the cars slowing in front of him what in the world is going on wow what is up with these cars wrecking each other out this will definitely cause this will definitely oh wow I do not know why the cars couldn't just go up on the high line to avoid the 48 and they just had to stand there and now they just held up the lead pack and they had damage with the leader cars. I mean, what what's going on? Look at this. This should have never happened with those four cars. Now they all got damage. Something like this should have never happened. And for some reason, these cars are not smart enough to go up high to avoid the 48 car. That is just ridiculous. Now they all have to go to pit road. And now there's a commotion with the 96 and 66. And now they had to stay out. And now things are really starting to become a mess here. Wow. I'm, I'm shocked at what's going on right now. Because these guys all have major damage for no apparent reason. Because... There was a wreck in front of them and they could not avoid it. And now Eli Bright on the pit road, Chris Leone. They're marking them as the leaders or something? Because that doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense at all. And now they're having some trouble getting through them. And now the 43 is credited for the leader as he should be. And now Bexford is out of the race. And there's another pile up in front of them. There is another pile up. The 51, something went wrong. I don't know if he stopped his car and he didn't get his car going or what. Like, what in the world? Like, what is going on with these cars now? Looks like that 51 stopped and now he's having trouble getting back into the track and he had to be teleported to pit road. 
That is just insane. This Bristol race is going to really shake up the points now in terms of who's going to advance and who's not. Johnny Gardner somehow survives, and he'll probably be credited for third place or fourth. I don't know who's going to be third now. Looks like it is going to be Gardner in third place, and more cars wreck each other. Max Bailey has to let those other cars go since they were ahead of him. And now they're cont now they're hoping to get back in line before it's too late. And uh, I don't know how many cars are going to be out of this race after uh, what just happened here. And we are seeing a really messy race here at Bristol. I well, it is a short track, but wow, there is really a lot of. A lot of carnage here in this race, and now the 51 is out of pit road. Hopefully, he gets his car back up on track, and Ryan Acosta has to pit again. So, after all this, where do we stand? Look at all the three car four cars, playoff drivers are out of the race, and Grayson Acevedo was the first one out of it, 37th, and Maxwell Smart, 34th, Isaiah Bernash and Katie Lynn Bexford are out, and Shane Golodex in 30th, and he's the driver in last place in, in the points, so he really did not need a race like this for him, um, yeah, he did not need a race like this for him to advance to the next round, so things are not looking too good for that double zero team. The 66 is still surviving somehow, and he's fourth right now, and he is right now in the bottom four of the playoff drivers. Really need a good finish here today to advance, so same for Johnny Gardner. Gardner is in third, actually, so he's hoping that he wins today to get himself in the next round. Wouldn't that be a surprise? <laughs> also, um, Dylan Crewman... Christian Dylan Kroom is in the bottom four right now in the points and he needs a good finish out of this to advance to the next round and where's Dylan Kroom he's supposed to uh, he's probably oh he's in fifth so look at that third fourth and fifth look at that three of the drivers in the bottom four are in the top five right now <laughs> this could be a complete turnaround for those three drivers if things go their way for the rest of the race Boy, wouldn't that be fun to add up the points at the end of round one to see who advances. But anyway, your leader is Alexander Rowe. He's trying to get in. He's trying to win and get into the round two. So we'll see if he does it. And we'll see what happens next as we get back to green. Yeah, that restart there definitely did shake up the points for sure. It's going to really be major in terms of changing the point style here in the this weekend can't wait to see how this one will turn out top three are in the stand top three right now pulling away and the 20 and 66 battle for all the points they can get now in the fourth spot Alexander Rowe though just dominant here today he's trying to pull off a win here in one in a race that he really needs it and Eli Bright just came off pit road, so oh boy. This is going to not go well. And we have a car spinning. And we have two cars spinning. Samit Oscon just went around. And so did Priya McShane. And now Chris Leon made contact with Priya McShane. The 12 car just got taken out. Zach Fitzwater was the one that took the 12 car out. Oh man. I guess he was not happy with how the last one turned out with the 12 car and just let and just decided to let it all out there okay Johnny Gordon just took second from the 96 Clark McKee how about that so Alexander Rose still leads and Austin Sissel's out of the race couple cars a lap down Chris Leon is a lap down and Eli Bright is two three two laps down gold x is three laps down there well right now oh leon's out of the race he's out of the race so we're gonna get back to the green flag at the halfway point here at bristol how is this going to end up 
26 laps to go. We're back to the green. Well, we got to hand it to Johnny Garner. He's not giving up. Look at him going on the bottom. Oh, he took a little bit of a bad line there, but he's still not giving up. Still trying to get that 43. He might, he might need to win to get in, but if he gets second, hopefully the points will be enough for him to advance to round two. But he wants to win. He just wants to flat out win, get, it, get things out of the way, get back to victory lane and win again. And Shane Goldex just came off pit road, so... And he just came back into pit road. He just was off pit road, he came back in. That's a little bit of a slowdown there for the top five cars. And more cars coming off pit road now. They all have damage. They're all trying to finish this race. Even if... Well, Eli Bright... Well, Eli Bright, again, these two are... They're going to be probably going in and out of pit road all day today now. But all just to finish the race and... Grab those big points to advance to the next round because they're going to need every point they can get to make it to round two. And Barreto just went by Clark McKee. That's another big point there for the two car. A lot of points on the line here in this race, especially if with four cars being eliminated from playoff contention after the race. So every point is critical. And right now they're running pretty smoothly other than the fact that occasionally they have to face off against lap traffic and that's going to be a big factor in how the leaders are going to be changing things up less than 20 laps to go and it's still the, the lead is still Alexander Rowe he's led every lap so far believe it or not and he really needs it but Eli Bright's gonna start right behind him how will this affect his draft well, it probably won't because the 88 just went on to pit road again. <laughs> it's probably going to go in and out of pit road again all race long. But it's just to finish this race and hope to get those big points. Just help has to rely on cars wrecking each other once again. So he can move up a couple spots and get those big points. A car off pit road but won't affect the leaders again gonna stay out of leaders um view it's pretty much gonna be a two-car race now unless if um, something happens in front of the front of the pack 16 to go for Alexander Rowe and so far he's doing a good job at keeping this lead in check oh Johnny Garner took a bad run that could be a benefit for Alexander Rowe to pull away now there's Dylan Kroon running third place. He's also in the bottom four in terms of points with Johnny Gardner and Christian Vargas. So these three running in the top five, they, they all three of them might actually catapult into the next round after starting the race off in the bottom four in the points. So, wow, Bristol's going to really change things up in the points. Uh, I'm sure of it when this race is over, so... Boy, is this going to be a really, really big shakeup in points if these three drivers who are in the bottom four to start things off are in the top five. They stay in the top five. And Alexander Rowe still leading the race, dominating this race as he's pulled to a big lead now in the final laps here at Bristol. And Anthony then going right behind Christian Vargas. He might try to get a position away. He might try to take fourth place away. And this could be a difference maker of whether or not Vargas will advance or not. Ooh, he's right behind him. Might try to make that move. And look at Pichu trying to make a move on him. And look at this. 37 Anthony then going to try to do, do it. Anthony then though got a little bit of a little run on the high line. But is he going to hold and stick? Doesn't look like he's going to stick it, though. Lap traffic in front of him, and he just gets to Eli Bright. Three wide, going to force Vargas up in the wall. And the Anthony then clears Vargas. Tough, but That was a tough one for the 37. He gains a position and a big point for him to advance. And one last point for Christian Vargas. 
So, but still a top five finish. He can, if he still holds on, he might still get a top five or even top ten finish as Igor Barreto's right behind him going for that position. Looks like Dylan Crew might be closing in on second spot actually against uh, Johnny Gardner. One more spot for Dylan Kroom. Could, it could help him out in terms of advancing to the next round. And where every point matters now in this first cutoff race of the playoffs. But Alexander Rowe, he's been unstoppable. Even when cars were wrecking behind him, he has been unstoppable here at Bristol. He's, no one's been able to catch him. He's hoping that his car stays in one piece with six laps to go. And he hopes to join among the other two drivers to advance into round two. Just five more laps at Bristol. You never know though. We could see another wreck that could bring an overtime finish. And we it might be crazy. The final two laps might be insane at Bristol if we have overtime. And then that's probably might what might be coming what might it might be coming down to. Four laps. Dylan Kroom right behind Johnny Gardner in the second place. They could still be battling for second here. And that could be good news for Alexander Rowe to pull away and maybe wrap up this win. I'm not sure if they're going to catch up to lap cars in front of him, but Dylan Kroom is gaining on Johnny Gardner. He's right on the bumper. The next move might be his move right here. Coming to two laps to go. Oh, look at Dylan Kroom right on the bumper of the 95. He might have one more run against him for second place. Trying to get an extra point away from Gardner as we come to the white flag with one lap to go for Alexander O. And we'll still be green till the very end. Kroom's got one more chance against Gardner. Lap cars in front of him, but I don't think it's going to affect Rowe at all. Off the final corner, Alexander O dominates at Bristol and he moves on to round two of the playoffs. Alexander O has moved on to round two with the win at Bristol. And round one has come to a close here in the playoffs as Johnny Garner just hangs on to second over a hard charging Dylan Kroon right behind him at that ver at the very end of the race. So Dylan, so it is going to be Alexander O taking the checkered flag here at Bristol Motor Speedway. And look at this, and we have the top, the bottom three of the four drivers all finished in the top five. Garner second, Kroom third, and Vargas fifth. And Shane Goladex, the one other driver in the bottom four, it's safe to say he might not advance over to the next round. 28th place he even got a DQ out of that one <laughs> so he was DQ'd and it looks like Golodex will be the first one eliminated from playoff contention so that is it from round one and here are the results from round one here in the playoffs and boy was it a wreck fest it really uh, changed things up in points so it's gonna yeah with the top with the bottom three of the with the bottom three of four being the top five here today it's going to change up the point standings and it's going to be a very, very tough battle to get into the next round. So coming up, we'll be, we will reveal the four drivers eliminated from playoff contention. So stick around. Alrighty guys, here we go. Let's, we'll, let's reveal the four drivers that have been eliminated from the first round of the playoffs. And as you can see here, I added up all the points for everybody else except for the three drivers finishing the top five: Johnny Garner, Dylan Kroom, and Christian Vargas. And I added, and uh, for the others, I did add up the points already. So we know that Christian Russell, Max Bailey, Alexander Rowe are in to the next round with the win, with a win in each of the rounds, of course. Uh, J.D. Figueroa and Eli Bright are also in the next round. Uh, they tied in points. However, Figueroa had the better finish in the first round than Bright did. Um, Figueroa's best finish in the first round was 7th. And Bright's best finish in the first round was 8th. Then Cassandra Kirker, Igor Barreto, and Clark McKee. I think it's safe to say they're in the next round. And St. for Anthony then are also in the next round. 
So now the drivers are on the bubble right now in the final three. Priya McShane, Isaiah Bernesh, and Grayson Acevedo in terms of point totals. So let's take a look at, let's see who's eliminated here today. I added up Shane Goladex's points as, well, the double zero car. He finished in 28th, only got 13 points out of that. So he'll finish with 1,024 points in the round. He has been eliminated from playoff contention. So now let's add up the points for Johnny Gardner's total, and he had 39 points for finishing in second. So we add that up, and that's going to be 1,078 points. And that means that Johnny Gardner has just made it into the next round, and Grayson Acevedo has been eliminated from playoff contention. So there we go, the first driver in and first driver out. So we do know that Acevedo and... Shane Goladex have been eliminated from playoff contention. Now, this ties Gardner with Katie Lynn Bexford in terms of points, but Gardner had the second place finish, of course, as his best finish of the round. So he is higher in terms of the points than Bexford. Bexford's best finish, just so you know, in that round was eighth. So let me update that so that I do not forget about it. So, yeah, there we go. Anyway, now let's add up Dylan Croom's point totals. He had 38 points in the round, so it'll be a thousand. So it'll be a thousand and seventy-five points he has in the end of the round, and he is also going to move on to the next round. And Isaiah Bernesh has been eliminated. So now the last spot either goes to Priya McShane or Christian Vargas. And as you all know, Vargas finished in 5th position here in Bristol today. He has 36 points out of Bristol, and we add that to his total. He has 1,070 points. And that means he is in the next round of the playoffs. And let me just check to be sure if I don't miss a name. Priya McShane has been eliminated from playoff contention. So we have our 16 drivers Still left in contention to fight for the title. And yes, it is 16 drivers. I did check and um, corrected everything. So this is the point standing um, right now as of the, the round of 12, round of 16, round 2. So anyway, Priya McShane, Isaiah Bernesh, Grayson Acevedo, and Shane Goladex have been eliminated. And Maxwell Smart, in a difference of three points, was the final driver to lock himself in to the next round. So there is all your so right here is where all is where the remaining playoff drivers stand right now. So Russell, Bailey, Rowe, they all are in on wins, and of course the others are in on points. And it was a close battle for the points. So this completely changed the outcome of the playoffs. Three of the four drivers that were in the in the bottom four uh, before the race, um, after the race, they got in the playoffs. So what a turnaround here at Bristol for those drivers and so McShane, Bernash, Acevedo, and Goladex have been eliminated and we will see you guys next weekend at Las Vegas for the start of round two of the playoffs. Until then we will see you guys later.